Okay, today I'm going to show you how to uh, install an operating system in Windows Virtual PC. I'm going to be using Windows 98 to install just because it's fun to mess around with older operating systems, but you could technically install whatever you wanted. The process isn't that much different. You can install Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 2000, Windows 95. It doesn't matter. Just <laughs> you can install it. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do this. You can't like game through it or anything. You could you could test like if you're uh, into that kind of stuff. You could test like certain software on it to see if it has viruses because this probably won't transfer the virus to your main machine. You could deliberately let viruses loose on it and just watch what happens. Whatever you want to do, it shouldn't transfer to your machine. I mean, if it's a really intelligent virus, it technically could, but I'd say that the odds of that are fairly low. It's a free utility, but it only this one only works on Windows 7. I don't know if there's an XP version or not. Um, to get it, you can uh, just go to the Microsoft website. They they give it out specifically for people to use for free. There's like enterprise versions, and this is what lets this is what lets servers like run multiple instances of servers. So one server that's really powerful can act as like 60 servers at once. But this one is not that powerful not even remotely, uh, <clears throat> but it's really useful if you just want to mess around with settings and stuff without ruining your computer. And But you will need a uh, operating system ISO or disk in order to install an operating system. But Windows 98 is fairly easy to find just online. I don't think they would mind if you got it online because <laughs> it's definitely not supported anymore. But just either go to Microsoft.com or just search for Windows virtual PC and it'll be like the first thing that comes up. Anyway, <clears throat> once you download that and install it, you'll have to restart your computer because that's to configure a bunch of stuff. But once that's done, go into start and might as well use the quick search feature, search for virtual PC or whatever. And then this is it right here, Windows virtual PC. We'll go ahead and open that up. And then this will open up the Windows Explorer. And this is exactly what it's supposed to do. Everything's installed correctly. It runs out of the Explorer. So um, to make a virtual machine, this is just a virtual machine in the system that's going to emulate everything. <coughs> so you don't have to worry about formatting hard drives, losing any data, nothing like that. It's just going to make the machine inside the operating system and save everything as files. Uh, Anyway, first we're, we're going to need to make a virtual machine in order to install an operating system on a virtual machine. So we'll click Create Virtual Machine. Then it wants a name. I'll go ahead and call mine Windows 98. And then I've already got it set up, so I'm just going to save mine on my X drive. You can save, you probably don't have an X drive. You can save it on C. You can save it anywhere you want. You can save it to the desktop if you want to, but I don't recommend doing that because they're are more than one file. <coughs> but once you uh, pick where you want to save it and stuff, and its name, click Next. Now it's going to ask how much memory <coughs> you want to uh, devote to this thing. Uh, this is going to use your actual memory, so you can't set this higher than the amount of memory you actually have. So if you're going to run Windows uh, 98 or Windows XP probably too. You can you might as well just set to 512 megabytes because that's that's a pretty standard amount. But if you're going to be trying to run Windows Vista or Windows 7, you're going to need it to be at least 1.5, if not 2 gigabytes. So your your system's going to have to be able to actually run <laughs> Windows Vista or Windows 7 if you want to have any chance of virtually running it. <laughs> and then you can choose whether or not you want it networked. So you can actually access the internet through the uh, virtualization client, which is kind of cool, and it takes care of everything for you for that. Anyway, once you figure that out, you can click Next. I mean, there's a little help things here if you're having trouble. Uh, now we have to make a virtual hard disk. As I said before, this will not format your hard disk. You won't lose any data from your actual hard disk. It won't make a new volume on your hard disk. It won't partition anything or anything like that. This is just going to make a file that uh, Windows Virtual PC is going to use as a hard disk. It'll just use the file. Uh, 
you have a few options. You can create a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk, which I don't recommend because it will um, basically makes a small file, and then as you add uh, space to it, it'll add space to the file as well. So you could potentially fill up your machine doing that. I mean, you probably won't, but just for organization, uh, I'm going to click Create Virtual Hard Disk Using Advanced Options, and then click Next. And then you have the dynamically expanding option again, but I'm going to use fixed size. Uh, and this will allow me to just enter a number like 10 gigs, and then the file will just be 10 gigs. It won't go bigger, it won't go smaller, just like it actually is. Um, if you're installing Windows 7 or Windows Vista, I recommend at least 16 gigs, because the operating system itself is going to use like 6 to 7 gigs. But Windows 98 is like... <laughs> like 200 gig, uh, no, <laughs> it's 200 megabytes, I mean, um, and Windows XP isn't much bigger than that, so you're not going to need that much space for Windows XP or 98, or and anything older is going to be even smaller. Uh, it's going to ask you what you want the name to be, I'll just name it the same name as the uh, machine, and I'll save it in the same place that I'm saving the machine, click next. Now it asks how big you want it, the default is uh, 16 gigs. Luckily that's in there, and it doesn't default to the maximum, because if you entered your full hard drive size, like it says right there at maximum, it will use, the file will use your entire hard drive, so don't do that. Yeah, I'm going to make mine a little smaller. I'll make it about 10 gigs. Uh, this is in megabytes, so you're going to want it to be in thousands to get to gigs. Um, I mean, technically 10,000 isn't uh, 10 gigs. It's a little bit less, but that's because... A gig is 1024 megabytes, but uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, then we'll just go ahead and click Create. And now this, it's creating the virtual hard disk. This will take about two to three minutes, depending on how fast your hard drive is and how fast your machine is. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And it's about done. Oh, yeah. Once that finishes, we see this thing has popped up over here. Uh, it says you should go to your virtual machines folder. To, anyway, just close out of this. Uh, now we have to go back to our virtual machines folder to open up a virtual machine. If you don't remember, you just, you just click on this so you can search for it. And then you'll have your new machine right in here because of the memory it's saved in the same place and it says it's in powered down status so it's powered down right now it's not using any memory or anything because it's not on to start that up just go ahead and double click on it and now I'll start up this the black screen with like the flashing stuff and stuff like that this is this is a clean slate it's not going to boot because this is basically like if you're if you just had a wiped hard drive on your system it doesn't do anything it needs instructions. You need to install an operating system. So you're going to need either a operating system disk or an operating system ISO for this. Um, I recommend you make an ISO if you know how to, because that's a lot faster than using a disk. Sometimes the disk is like debilitatingly slow when installed because it has to. The program has to um, interact with the computer, then interact with the optical drive in order to run. Well, using an ISO, it just kind of copies the stuff over. It's already practically copied. It takes like very short amount of time to just cut, use the ISO. It'll you don't have to use daemon tools or anything. It'll just uh, it'll just mount the ISO in the program, and it can also mount your actual physical disk drive if it wants to. But I'm going to pause the video where I set up my uh, options a little bit better.